On Tuesday, the U.S. Department of Health announced a $500 million cut to funding for mRNA vaccine research, sending shockwaves through the global scientific community. The mRNA vaccine technology has long been considered the next best step in treating various cancers and other diseases and was pivotal in curbing the COVID-19 pandemic. But how does this decision affect research around the globe? For that, let's bring in Peter Cullis, UBC Professor of Biochemistry and Order of Canada recipient. Peter, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Your research helped advance our understanding of mRNA technologies and in part made the COVID vaccine possible. Tell us what went through your mind when you heard about the U.S. funding cuts. Well, really, mystification. Uh, you know, the, this is one of the... Um, probably top uh, um, new technologies in medicine that's come along in the last, uh, I don't know, 20 or more years. Uh, here we have a you know, technology that can not only uh, is very, make very effective vaccines very quickly, um, but it also is proving useful um, to uh, treat uh, cancer, for example, cardiovascular disease, rare disease. It's really a new generation of medicines uh, that has enormous potential uh, for, um, for curing our various ailments. So it's, uh, it's a complete mystery what's going on. I, um, you know, I think for most scientists, we're just looking at this with, uh, with amazement. Um, it's, it's incredible. And Peter, how will the cut affect research and development? Well, it's going to obviously affect things negatively, um, particularly in the U.S. Uh, with regard to the vaccines. Uh, whether it, it impedes the uh, other uses of the mRNA technology, we shall see. Um, but uh, in, in general, it, um, it, it serves to, I guess, uh, you know, for, for people that don't know much about vaccines and, and, uh, and medical science, um, it's probably going to make them rather nervous about using uh, these uh, these sorts of um, well, vaccines and other therapeutic and other therapies that rely on it. So in that sense, it's very negative. Um, you know, already there's enough uh, skepticism about vaccines, which are really, you know, by far the most effective things for for, for preventing disease that uh, we have in our arsenal. Uh, so that kind of engendering that kind of um, you know. Uh, misunderstanding is not is not good at all. And what are you hearing from your colleagues? I know you've worked your whole life probably towards uh, having technologies and and research like this. So what are the what is the community saying? Well, it depends on which part of the community you're in. I mean, in Canada, we're, we're starting to see this as well, maybe this is an opportunity for us to really step up our game and uh, take advantage of things that are going on south of the border. But uh, colleagues in the U.S. Are, are, are obviously dismayed by this. I mean, you know, for, for people in academic and to some extent in commercial and in, in company research, um, this is a major blow. Uh, their, their funding is getting cut, so things like making the vaccines more effective, uh, making them more uh, last longer, uh, cure, uh, get, getting rid of problems of storage at you know low temperatures, etc. All of those, all of those efforts uh, are, are 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 on hold. Uh, so it's a um, yeah, it's it's not a good situation at all. It's part of a more more general attack. It would seem. Uh, on the funding system uh, in the U.S. for for not just medicine but for other uh, you know, other areas of uh, of research. So it's a this is a this is a, a strange time in science uh, where we're having to uh, contend with you know what really great technology and it's uh, it's really being um, well mis misnamed, misused, and uh, and uh, increasingly misunderstood. Peter Collis is a professor of biochemistry at the University of British Columbia. Thank you so much for your time today, Peter. My pleasure. Thank you.